how should you use your vote? Doug Ford and the Ontario PCs may have a majority government, but that has some Canadians asking to review how we vote. So here's what Ontario legislation looks like under our current system. This is as of the last election. Let's see what things would, look, would have looked like under a proportional representation system. That's when the number of seats a party wins is tied to the percentage of the vote it receives. Follow along. Under that system, no party would have won a majority and with a federal election on the horizon next year and provincial elections in New Brunswick and Quebec this fall, should electoral reform be back on the table? Joining us now is the Globe and Mail's Adam Rudwanski. And Adam, I was joking with you earlier saying, I feel like when I say electoral reform, people hear tooth enamel and they don't want to pay attention <laughs> anymore. But it's important because it's about our vote and how it's best used. It is, and it's a question partly of what do parties do to get your vote and how many people are they actually speaking to? And one of the issues that you may see with our current system is that it kind of incentivizes parties to only speak to, say, you know, 40% of the electorate who they think might vote for them and kind of ignore the rest. So mm -hmm. I do think it's of interest to people. I agree that it can, it can seem a little dry and a little wonky, especially because we've talked about it a lot and nothing ever seems to happen on it. That's true. All right, more than 80 countries currently use it. This is proportional representation. Why do our leaders, in particular Justin Trudeau in the last election campaign in the federal election, said that he was going to bring in electoral reform, but then he backed down? I think that graphic you showed uh, maybe shows a little bit why that is. I mean, not that Doug Ford was promising in Ontario, but when a government comes into our current system, usually it has, well, it always has the most seats, and often it has a big majority of seats, and so the incentive isn't really there to do it. That's part of it. Even if it, even if it might still be interested, it doesn't seem like a top priority. Uh, and also, I think there's sometimes, even if a government might be interested, it's sometimes a tough thing to sell because there can be a perception. I think we saw this with Justin Trudeau a little bit from the other parties that the, that the new government is trying to rig the system somehow, or at least that's how opponents can paint it. Mm -hmm. So at the least, it, it can seem like more trouble than it's worth. And if not outright, just something that would actually hurt the government once it's actually come into power. Uh, does it benefit certain parties over other parties? It would right now. Uh, I think you would see, I mean, in Ontario, it would have helped the NDP. Um, generally, the way the parties have campaigned so far, I think it might hurt the Conservatives most, either federally or provincially, because they tend to be the, the party that sort of most caters to a relatively small but strong sliver of the electorate. Um, but I think what we don't know, and what makes it kind of interesting is, how differently might parties campaign if we had the system? I mean, right now, there is no incentive to try to speak to the entire population. So what would, a, what would an electorate look like if, or what would the House of Commons look like mm -hmm. um, if every party had incentive to speak to everybody? So, you know, I grew up out west and, you know, I heard this refrain when I was growing up that, you know, it feels like your vote doesn't count. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, you can go out and you exercise your, your duty, but at the end of the day, it's Ontario and Quebec that are going to decide it for the country. If we bring in proportional representation, does that change? It can. Again, I mean, that's the hope is that, yes, every vote matters more. So if you live in a riding now where only one or two parties compete, every party has incentive to speak to you. Um, so I think that's the hope of what happens. I mean, I guess the question is, uh, when we look at this stuff, how much do we want to mess with it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I personally, I tend to be a fan of the idea of making every vote count a little more. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, when you look around the world right now, um, the level of instability you see elsewhere can also be a case for maybe taking a, okay, of all of our problems, this is the one we want to address right now. I think that's probably the best argument that you would hear against it is, yes, it would be nice for all of us to have our votes count a little more. Um, do we want to risk the possibility of having more stable majority governments uh, that we tend to get under our current system? All right, Adam, good to talk to you. Thanks for explaining this through for us as we are looking ahead now to a new election in 2019. Thank you.